there's a false period addiction even because we're seeing, as you well said, that despite the very obvious and very visible impacts of climate change on health that we're seeing today very clearly, we're still overusing fossil fuels at a point when we don't need to because we have alternative sources. About 80% of the countries that we've analyzed still allocate net subsidies to fossil fuels for amounts that are of a total of $400 billion each year. And what we see with concern is that we still are not allocating the funds that we need to promote a just transition, to allocate $100 billion to promoting the so-called developing countries in their transition, that we're not funding properly renewable energy technologies, and that that investment is not quite there yet. So now we're in quite a pivotal moment. This is quite a critical juncture, we call it, because we're seeing that countries are trying to respond simultaneously to a cost of living crisis, to a fossil fuel crisis, to an energy crisis, and that people desperately need energy to warm their homes rather than turning back and backsliding to fossil fuels. They could now promote the low carbon energy transition, promote a healthy, just future. And in doing so, we could not only deliver more resilient energy grids, we could stop the dependence on fossil fuel that we've seen are very volatile and very dangerous to depend on. The level of climate impact that we've seen today, we've seen the floods in Pakistan that were devastating. We've seen the UK reaching 40 degrees this year. The UK is utterly unprepared to cope with that level of temperatures. We've seen the same in the North um, US. Extreme weather events are at our doorstep and actually killing us every year in thousands or even millions. And now we've seen families struggling to afford the fuel they need, dealing with very high energy bills. And that is because we have not delivered low carbon, healthy, affordable, renewable energy. If we want to avoid a very catastrophic future for our health, we need to reduce emissions by about 50% in the next eight years.